Sport climbing is an obsession. It demands so much effort. Why do we do this? Why do we invest like months, sometimes years? I grew up in São José do Rio Preto. It's this small city, like four or five hours away from São Paulo. I went to this recreational center one day with my brother. I was 10. I saw this little climbing wall there, tried it, and never really stopped ever since. There's a profession that comes with escalators. Segui a minha vida escalando. I was fascinated. I was like, this is cool, you know? There was no other 10-year-old kids climbing. I didn't know if I was good or not. I just really liked it and kept doing it. Climbing wasn't popular at all. I think we only had like four climbing gyms in the whole country. So it was really hard for me to compete. And then we heard about this youth championship in Guatemala. I really wanted to go, but my family didn't really have that much money to just send me there. We were talking about it in the gym and this guy heard us and I was like, maybe I can try to help out somehow. I got something for you guys, but it's not really money. <laughs> so they just gave us a ton of soda. In the end, we made enough to pay for my ticket. I was 14, I didn't speak English or Spanish. I went by myself, just went for it. What happened there changed everything. People started talking about me in South America. Part of the reason that Felipe's story is so impressive to me is that he made a really elite level of performance rock climbing happen with way fewer resources than most people. For us in America and for people in Europe, you know, we had state-of-the-art climbing gyms almost 20 years ago. And in Brazil, they just had little, like, plywood home walls, basically. I want to show that it's possible to climb hard from anywhere in the world, you know? Of course, it's easier if you have amazing training facility, but there's no reason that Brazilians can be climbing 9B or South Americans can be climbing 9B. The way I would describe a 9B to a non-climber is like, if you can think of the smallest handholds you can possibly think of, and you put like 50 of them up a wall, at a 20 to 30 degree angle with very few rests. It's hard. <laughs> it's, it's really hard. I think there's around 15 people in the world that have climbed 9B. So it's huge. I want to be on that select group of people and be the first South American to do it. I've been training here in Sao Paulo, specifically to go to Spain to try to do a bone combat. I think it's safe to say that El Bon Combat is one of the hardest routes in the world. There isn't a single easy move on the route. It's got some crazy, unique holds that you don't see anywhere else. I dream about the route, I dream about the moves. It's definitely an obsession. I try to simulate the boulders and the hardest moves on the route lucky to find these perfect two little pebbles that are really similar to the pebbles on the root. I also found this two finger pocket just like on the rock. And I found a hole that worked perfect for that. I have to get it with two and then can squeeze the third finger in. Everyone who works on something that's near their perceived limit has to break it up into manageable sections. You start with the smallest details, like how to grab the holds, where to put your feet, how to position your body for the big moves, and then you just expand on that, trying to bite off bigger and bigger pieces. Why do we do this? Why do we invest like months, sometimes years? Obsessed about getting to the top of that climb without falling. <laughs> for sure we're gonna get frustrated. That uncertainty, you know, will I be able to do it or not? If you're a professional climber, Spain is just the place to be. It's like Hawaii is for surfers, 
Spain is for, for climbers, you know, for sport climbers. I first heard of Elbon Combat a few years ago. This route, grade 8, 9B, from Chris Sharma. I think the fact that it's only seen one ascent since its first ascent in 2015 probably means that it's like pretty hard. When Chris proposed that grade, that would have made it the third hardest route in the world. Come on, get it, dude! Oh. So far, we go up the route three times per day. That's kind of like a lot of tries. Oh. No. Right when I got here, uh, I felt like the, the simulators that I set at the gym helped a lot for uh, the two top crooks. Like I felt really good on those moves since day one. So I feel like it's just a little bit of muscle memory from what I was doing in the gym already. Come on. No! Hey, huh? Dude, that was epic. Good job. Thanks. Yeah, I got the pocket pretty well. Adjusted, jumped. And then I got this right hand kind of badly. Yeah. So I like got up like harder than normally. Yeah. Then I got the potato and I was like, oh. And then I wanted to shake last, left hand and I got pumped on the right. I was like, oh, I think I blew it. So oh, close, yeah. dude. Stoked. I was thinking about it and I was kind of like starting to feel a little bit of pressure. I mean, I do have some bad thoughts like, oh shit, now this rain's gonna come. Why but it... you definitely start like imagining what if I don't do it this season for some reason? Like what if I hurt myself? Skin is not as good as would hope, as I would like it to be, but <laughs> yeah, but it's all right. It's been worse. I think that top's still gonna give me a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Those moves are hard for me up there. I can see falling on the last move for sure, though. Look at the secret. Keep yourself stoked. Hey, I believe you got this, dude. Another try. First try of the day, I felt really good. Made nice. through that on, middle crux it, and then got to the rest, was feeling like super fresh, wasn't pumped. And then, yeah, got the true finger pocket really nicely. Come on, you got it. Come on, get it, dude. Yes, yeah, so good. And I, as I was gonna jump to the, to the sloper, it just popped the left foot. Oh! It broke the hose. No! Oh my god. Broke the foot. Are you serious? Yeah. Holy shit. Well, first it was a bummer because I was feeling great. I was sure that I was going to send. And then the move got a little harder too. I was like, oh no. No, I don't freaking do it again. And broke the hold and now the rain's going to come. And <laughs> really surprised with the weather. A bit too cold for the Brazilian. <laughs> Today was already really windy and cloudy. But it could just rain for a few days. Yeah. So this is the extended forecast here? Yeah. Where are we It now? is tomorrow. Okay. 12 millimeters. 12 millimeters. 15 millimeters. 10 millimeters. If it rains a lot in the morning and in the night, it's not gonna dry, you know? You know, when the rain's coming, you already feel the humidity and everything. Just hope it's not like that because the conditions really change everything on this route. It's like non-stop rain. Yeah, it looks crazy. I mean, should I be honest and say, like, should I talk about what happened with those guys? All right, Felipe, I'm on belay. After hearing the news about David and those guys, it totally changed my mentality. Pretty bummed about them and like thinking about them so much that I forgot about the route a little bit. I wasn't really 
you know, worrying about it. It makes you put things in perspective, for sure. Everything you got, come on! Got this. Come on. Come on. Yes, dude. Try to relax. Come on, Felipe. You got this, dude. Come on, try hard. Come on. Yes, come on, Felipe. Everything you got, come on. Come on, it's yours. Come on. Why do we do this? I guess it's this unknown challenge. When you first try it, you don't know if you're gonna be capable to do it or not, you know? It's something that's gonna be so hard for you and you just have to be dedicated, train hard and try your best. I really just wanted to push the limit for myself and for Brazil and for South America, you know, just to show that it's possible for us to, you know, it's possible that we can do it. Ah! 